Today, I'm going to show you how to do light painting. I hope you don't mind the dark. <laughs> how vile was that? I tell you, just watching it myself, the bloody scream when I downloaded the scream effect was like ten times louder than the rest of the video. I was like, Jesus Christ, it bloody scared me. Anyway, we're pleased to know that we won't be doing the whole video in the dark because that's not going to work. But what I'm going to try and do is explain to you in layman's terms, beginner, I'm not a beginner anymore, but I'm still, compared to my peers, very much a beginner. So I'm going to try and put across the most basic, simple ways to create light painting. Okay, now I'm no expert, but once you've got the basic settings and how to focus and stuff like that, quite frankly, the rest is up to your imagination. Um, which I run out of. I try, but we all do the same. We look at ideas and we, we copy the idea. So I'm going to do a couple of different setups in the, uh, in the studio here. I'll go through some settings um, and we'll do some light painting. And at the end of it, you can go away and do it yourself. Now, the first... Well, how does it work? Okay, I'll go back to absolute beginner. If you know this already, you know. If you don't, this is how to create a long exposure, essentially. Um, so what we're doing is we're opening the shutter for as long as possible, letting in as little light as possible. Now, ideally, light painting, you want a dark room, as you've just seen. Um, you want a subject that you don't want to paint with light. Now, be it a model, for argument's sake, the lights are off, and you paint the model, and then he's lit up, nothing else is. That's one way of light painting. So if you're doing sort of some landscape stuff and you want to light paint the foreground or light paint a tree, something like that, that's how you do it. You've got your shots of your stars or whatever you're going for, and you... You paint wherever you put that torch is where it's going to light up in that, let's say, 30 second exposure. Okay, most cameras go 30 seconds without needing um, a lock, a shutter lock release, whatever they call shutter release cable. Um, so if you've got your 30 second shot, anything you do in those 30 seconds will come up as light. To the point of movement barely exists of people, which is quite weird. You can literally prance around in the middle of a field waving your light and your torches or you, you can have the you can buy these little like look like led kind of plastic tubes you can wave them around and do all kinds of mad stuff you've probably seen videos on it so i'm not going to go into that realm of how to do it i'm just going to go through the basics so focusing focus beforehand that's your best bet. Some cameras will have uh, an LCD or maybe a setting where it brightens up your LCD so you can see your foreground and then we take the shot, it will go back to how your setting was. Mine does do that. That probably sounded a bit confusing. But honestly, your best bet is to light your subject, sort your focus, click it off, and then you're there. You've got your, uh, your manual focus is what you want on. That's the one I'm after. So you've got your 30 second exposure. F number, doesn't massively matter. If you're just going for that and you're, sorry, you can't see over there. If you're just going for that and you're painting behind it, you only really need these couple of bits in focus. So sort of F4, F5, you're going to be all right. Um, if you're going maybe for sort of like a, a fancy foreground and something quite deep, then you're going to want to go up a lot higher, which then obviously the higher the F number, or is it the lower? Yeah, the higher, I don't know. I never know which way the F numbers work. I don't know how they work. High numbers are low apertures. That's the one. A fast lens has a low number. So obviously the lower the F number, the more light it's gonna let into you might compensate on shutter speed. Now, if you're shooting at a 1.8 on the F number and you're going for a 30 second, chances are you're gonna light up everything around you far too much. So then you need to either change the F number so you can still have a 30 second shutter or you've got to change the shutter. Therefore you've got less time to paint. I think that's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple of simple setups. We'll switch the lights off. You'll see me waving lights around, and then I'll put the light on, the uh, the light back on, and we'll see what the picture looks like. So uh, bear with me, and I'll get a setup going. So here we have. I'll get down with a torch. Here we have Uncle Rico. Okay. Now I've seen my head torches on him at the moment, but what we're going to do 
is we're going to take the shot and I'm going to go, hmm, I'll put the settings on in a second because I might play about a little bit, but I'm going to take the shot and it will basically end up looking very similar to this. But obviously when the lights are on, it was a lot brighter. So obviously if I turn this off, that's what the camera sees at the moment. Absolutely nothing. I take the shot and we end up with something similar to this. I'll put it on with the settings. Hang on. So, there you have your first demonstration. Very basic, settings are on the picture. Again, when you're doing um, sort of long exposure or, or night photography, I find me personally, for the shots that I've experienced so far, you want your ISO as low as it can go. And then you can play with the shut speed and the aperture to fill the gaps. It is trial and error. I learn everything I do from YouTube videos and practice, practice, practice. My wife will tell you it does her editing. So, thank you, Uncle Rico. What we're going to do now is show you something a little bit more inventive. Uh, again, this is just all simple stuff done in my garage. Uh, the studio. Bloody hell, I've got to stop getting that wrong. So, we're going to take a lens. Okay. We're going to pop him. Don't worry, it's a lens that's... Well, it does work, I think, but it's not for any of my cameras. It's more just a showpiece. Uh, it's probably quite a good one. What was it, a macro? 80 to 200. Yep, something like that. But we're going to stand Uncle Rico on his pedestal and we're going to use... I'll just bloody put it down somewhere, hang on. Ever the organised one. You know this is actually a really hard video to make. I think uh, anyone who's had a go at this will appreciate this because I'm obviously using one camera. I have to change settings between all the pictures. Now I could take all the pictures and then go back and film all the settings but, um, but I'm not that well advanced I don't write things down I don't have notes but anyway we're going to use this and we are going to basically start up here we're going to go probably five second timer f5 maybe I don't know I'll put all the settings on we're going to start with it up high and I'm going to wave it around behind him now this light I don't know how well the camera's going to see this but it's got loads of can we see it not quite I'm worried reflection on the screen it's got loads of little LEDs um, probably like 20 odd so we're going to start like this we're going to wave it behind and then I'm going to come around the front, paint him up, and believe it or not, it doesn't actually matter if you do go in front of the lens because it only picks up the light. It doesn't pick up the stuff that's not light. It's it's crazy how light painting works, and I'm still, like I say, learning a lot. This is just a beginner's guide. Um, so yeah, light the front of him up, and that will give you a shot like this. Pretty cool, eh? And these are just simple things. Then you can go in Lightroom and you can change colours. Um, it's pretty crazy. Then, depending on how good you are at editing, you can do some pretty crazy ones. I will run one different edit of that same shot. I'll just run a different edit and pop that on now. So, thank you, Uncle Rico. Legend. I reckon he could throw a ball over them there hills. If you haven't seen the film, you need to. Napoleon Dynamite, absolute cracking movie. It's so dry, it's so funny. Um, yeah, really good film. Bit of promoting, wasn't sponsored by. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to carry on, I don't think, to be honest. I think we've done a couple of just very quick examples. The rest, I will run some pictures of long exposure I've done. I've done it with fireworks, haven't done wire wall yet. That is one that is on the bucket list. Probably should have done that for this video because that would be mint. But that is a vlog that I'll do. I will go out. We're gonna go to some, I've got a nice little spot near me. It's a bridge, an old train bridge. Graffiti all down it. I want to stand on there and spin it so it all hits the walls and goes kind of square but then sprays out the top. And whoa! You can go nuts as long as you play with the settings. And it is trial and error. The focus is trial and error. How long you need to paint whatever you're painting is trial and error. That heartbeat I'd done at the beginning took me about 20 goes. Honestly, it was hard just to get this blue red light, yeah, like so. 30 second shot. Well, not even 30 seconds, I don't think. And go along like that. Do you know how many goes it took? Honestly, you do. I just told you. Um, it was hard work. So there, like I say, settings were on the pictures. I'll show you some more. If I've got the settings for those pictures, I'll put those on as well, just to give you an idea on the time and uh, and all of it. Obviously, it's all done in the dark. Um, it is slightly different to long exposure in the day. That it, it, They're two different styles. You don't need filters for night time, so that saves you a few quid. Um, there's a girl on Instagram. I will put her 
thingy on there, what's it called, name. <laughs> I'll put her name on the bottom. She does some of the best light painting that I've seen in her garden. She goes to some locations, but a lot of it is in her back garden. And she does these bloody jellyfish and spooky things. She went to the woods for Halloween and all sorts. So Annie Jones, I believe her name is, but I'll put the, the thing on the bottom. So, um, yeah, go check out her Instagram because she does some really cool light painting. Um, and then message her and ask her a bit more about it. She's got more equipment than me. I literally just have an old LED, a few torches, but you can have some fun with it. So I'll run some more photos. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, peace out. Don't get scared.